Okay. We are still... Oh, we're late. Sorry about that, guys. I usually have my phone in the landscape position when I record videos for YouTube, and I figured Facebook Live would be about the same way, except that it's like, no, you can't do that. So <clears throat> I had to adjust the arm and all of that good stuff. So it is 430... 432. So I guess we are way late. So welcome to String Theory Fabric Art Stitching Bitch with me. Um, we are going to be doing the shanky ID badge, just like that. And I gave you some measurements earlier and they were a little bit oversized, but it's better to have too much fabric or vinyl and rather than not enough. So hey, how you doing? The first thing that you're going to need, because this guy finishes up with a satin edge, is we use WSS. Now, there are all kinds of WSS. Um, this is a lightweight WSS. It has about the same consistency as blur uh, saran wrap. This does not make very good WSS for when you do an in the hoop project like full stitch lace or the ID badge or patches because as you go along it's very fragile and it perforates and separates. They do have the saran wrap stuff um, that's a lot thicker and this works a little bit better than this stuff but not a whole bunch better. So what is recommended and if you don't have it that's cool that's chill we can work around it is a woven WSS and my favorite woven WSS is something called H2O Be Gone and the O is E-A-U. They're all being all French and everything. So what we are going to do, good morning from rural Australia. Well, good day, mate. We're going to cut <laughs> some of this to fit our hoop. And there we go. This is uh, the um, ID badges. Yay for us are a four by four pattern. So everybody, well, everybody can stitch along on this one. There is no uh, oversized hoop required. You don't need a five by seven. You don't need a big mamma jamma. And before you go, you're cutting way too much. I know I'm cutting way too much. I'm gonna see if I can't get two out of this, but I don't think eh, I can yeah but I don't feel comfortable with that because I want a little bit of edge there so we're gonna go ahead and we'll do it like that okay so we got our hoop hey hi all of you I doubled mine as per someone else's comment okay double works yeah sure Okay, and if you've all you've got a cutaway or tearaway, not WSS, then what you'll do is instead of doing um, the applique cut on the front and the back at the next to the last step, you'll um, you'll leave it like it is, and then when you trim out, you'll trim out that eighth of an inch away from the satin so that you'll have some vinyl sticking out. It'll be fine. So we're gonna put this in. And we're gonna make sure there's no wrinkly wrinkles, no wrinkly wrinkles, and then we want to tighten this hoop all the way up and you can't see me well you can see me a little bit there we go i slide the edge of my hoop off the table so that i can get a really good tighten hello from wisconsin happy to be here hello from cold snowy random lake wisconsin is it really snowing there oh my gosh are you using medium cutaway or a light? This is actually a woven WSS, Elizabeth. If you don't have a woven water-soluble stabilizer, then go ahead and use a medium weight cutaway, and I'll show you what to do. Evening from Florida. Hey, San Antonio. Cool. All right, so we got her hooped up. We got her tightened up. So... First thing we're going to do is, it doesn't matter for, nope, not snowing in northeast Wisconsin. Well, good for you. We had thunder boomers last night starting at about 6, and they went all the way till 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning. 
I know that because I got woken up at three or four o'clock in the morning going, oh my God, is it Armageddon? Okay, so on your, I'm using the 770. Let's see. Yep. So I am going to load my pattern. There we go. And I always like to um, print my stitch order sheet. And I like to cheat because I'm lazy. And if you look on your stitch order sheet, you will see that the first actual stitch color that gets used is a pale yellow. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and use that pale yellow as my dye line. Well, no, because we need to be able to see. So let's go ahead and use the hot pink. So let's load up our thread. And all I've got in my hoop right this second is the WSS. There's nothing else in there. Arr, come here. Okie dokie. So we are loaded up and we're ready to rock. And we are gonna put this in there, yay. Just like that. And we are gonna hit the go now button. I feel, hey guys, come over to my house. We're gonna watch the paint dry and the grass grow. It's it's just stitching, I don't know. Um, picking up a bit of a, s really, you think? Okay, so there are all of our dye lines where we are going to place everything. And because I'm one of those anal retentive people, these jumps will never show, they will never catch on anything, but I still like to cut them because I've got nothing better to do. Next, we are going to take whatever vinyl we are going to use. Your machine is so quiet compared to my SC600. Hmm, that's interesting, huh. Um, I'm sorry you're missing your machine, Allison. And we are going to float this now. For those of you who are, wow, that is way too big of a piece of fabric. We could probably cut that down, but I cut it like this, so we're gonna use it. Um, you don't need to tape it. You don't need to stabilize it, pin it, blah, 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 unless you're stitching on the deck of the Titanic during a Cat 5 hurricane, just floating it is fine. If you are feeling a tiny bit paranoid, you can squirt the back with just a dash. Did you hear that? That's just a dash of 505 and squinch it down. But you don't have to do that either. So the first color in our stitch order sheet is pale yellow. That is going to be some shading on my shanky. So we're gonna load up our pale yellow. There we go. And I'm going to slide you. Put down the sticky. What? Stop. Oh, that's right. You hate my sticky. Sorry, Ray. <laughs> All right. And now we hit the go fast button. Boom. Go fast. Oh, woman, get over yourself. I'm gonna come over, Ray, and I'm going to spray all of your hoops with 505 when you're not home and not looking. I'm gonna make everything tacky and sticky. So 
So one of the reasons that I chose to do this thingamaboober on the five, or on the 770 was because most of you have seven, you know, five by seven machines, smaller machines. Um, there's the whole, it's easier. Um, to get the camera adjusted for the 770 than it is for one of the big jammas, but also so that you get to watch me cut jumps. Do people who are on their A game always have printouts? That's just me because usually I'm testing and if I have the printout, I can circle or highlight or make some notation that um, this particular section of the pattern didn't stitch the way I wanted to, or I want to, you know, change a color or change the stitch order. So I have my pieces of paper. As a matter of fact, let's see. Um, there's an upcoming 4x4 four four zip bag, and you can see um, I've made notes on it, you know, make this a bean stitch, add a ribbon cut line. So I always print my stitch orders so that I can make notes on them on what I need to change and what went wrong in the testing. Um, I've heard other people who uh, don't, they use their iPad or they use their laptop to go along. Um, honestly, if it's just a full fill and you don't want to follow my color suggestions, you don't need a printout of any kind. You just load it up and go, oh, this is a party color. I think I'll use this one. There is no embroidery police. We are not gonna come and arrest you if you don't use the exact colors that the stitch order sheet tells you to. Squee, aw, Trish. Okay, so that was the first one. Mm -hmm. um, medium peach, we're doing the inside of his ears. Shanky's little ears. I tell you what, Shanky is one of my mom-in-law's most favorite things. Every time I do a Shanky for Christmas or St. Patty's Day or whatever. She sends me an email and says, when you come to the house next time, bring me Shanky. That one's mine. All right. And away we go. They are not growing into animals. Most of my hoops still look good-ish. All right, so that was a tiny little stitch color, but we still have one jump. There we go, Asta, bye-bye. Now we are going to do goldenrod for his iris, or um, eyeballs. For his eyeballs. And I'm done with that peach. I don't need to put it back in my There we go, and we're off to the races. I tried to, I tried to keep the sketch count down on some of these guys, except that with this satin outline, it's gonna take a while to finish. All right, so this one's gonna be a T90 little jump. All right, so see how tiny that jump is? I am gonna slide my scissors carefully and snip. And then I use tweezers to pull up that end and go snip. And now we are on to uh, the next color, which is, and yes, I, uh, which is the medium rose. I always snip my jumps between. Uh, I try to design so that we don't overstitch stuff, that jumps don't get buried but I still prefer to um, snip my jumps between each color step. How many of you are actually following along and how many are you just watching me stand here? Well, not me. You're actually watching Cora. Cora's got about 11 million stitches on her. She's one of the older machines, um, one of the older 770s in the stable. 
She likes doing fobs. Oh, you're all right. Maggie, do you need me to slow down? What am I having for dinner? Yes, I see you, Ray. <clears throat> okay. I got a couple of people going slow down, slow down, slow down. So as soon as Shanky gets done with the medium rose, color stop five, I will slow my roll. You're cooking turkey, taters, and veggies? Erica, I am so jealous. All right. So that was color stop five. I am going to pause here and well of course I'm gonna cut my jumps do, do, do. I like the nice long jumps they make my life easy yay the tiny jumps I use tweezers cuz I'm just that kind of person um, this is the I chose this vinyl this is a uh, I think it's either Magic Shimmer or Shimmering Sands. I got it from New Moon. I love it, it's one of my favorite. Um, it is a floppy vinyl, so it does better with sketchies and light fills rather than with full fills and dense stuff. Um, but I'm sure if I um, put some SF-101 on the back of it or um, used Heavyweight Stabilizer, I could probably up the density on it. Spaghetti with homemade bread. Oh, Phyllis, yum. Ooh, barbacoa. I haven't made barbacoa in like four months, five months. Of course, I can't make any of these things right now. I'm on a diet. Yuck. So all the good food has gone away and I'm living the life of a rabbit. Lots of vegetables. Ugh. Although I've developed a taste for quinoa. I don't even know what that is, but I'll eat it. Uh, you're using solar purple from Double H. Cool. Ooh, hubby's grilling steak and taters. Mmm. Steak and taters sound good. Not gonna lie. What else have we got? Um, homemade bread. Oh, good lord. A toddler, toddler, and a highlighter. Woof. Drive through is open. Aw, Debbie, that is sweet. I've done. I've been on the diet since January tenth. It is now March. Blarg. It is the blarg of March, and I've lost twenty pounds. So we're gonna stick at it. I'm happy. No, I'm not. I'm miserable. But. Matt just walked in. Hey, Matt! All right. Let's see. I'm bored. <laughs> I miss bread. You know, I don't miss, like, normal bread, but, like, dairy bread, you know, bakery bread, homemade, really good bread, fresh from the oven. I miss that. But, like, you know, a loaf of bread from the supermarket, not so much. Which diet, it's this weird Mediterranean slash low starch kind of thing. Blarg. It's fine. I am still fat and eating red. Bite me, Ray. <laughs> I 
Hey, summer's coming, and I've I've got to be able to fit back into my summer clothes, so. Hot bread and butter, Homer noises. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we're going to go ahead. Let me know if I'm going too fast. We're going to do the lemon yellow. Chasing a two-year-old is my diet. Yeah, I'm sure the beef on the barbacoa would be fine. It's the rice that's forbidden. And we make a cilantro lime rice that goes with our barbacoa. And the the, the citrus um, cilantro mixed with the hot and spicy of the barbacoa is just divine. Okay. So not a lot of stitching on the yellow. There's just three little pieces, part of his mane, part of his horn, and part of his um, bangs. So you only have two little jump stitches to do here. Boom and boom. And then after lemon yellow white, we're gonna do his teeth. How, what Do you guys think that Shanky needs to go to a dentist? Has he got an, an underbite problem? Cauliflower rice. I haven't tried cauliflower rice. Does it really taste the same? So white. Of course, my shanky's on kind of a pearlescent white, so his white teeth are kind of, if you're doing on white vinyl, you could probably skip right on by this one, but yeah. Hey, but the good news is, on these little teeth, there are no jump stitches, so yay. Who pushed your button, Chris? Shanky braces. <laughs> so we have nothing. We have nothing to cut on the white. There. Oh, I feel like cauliflower. Um. So there's nothing to cut on the white. So our next stitch color is a medium pastel blue. And hey guys, I must figure Shanky is sticky out. It's lower lip and pouting. Shanky is perfect. Um, you don't have to follow for his, his details. You don't have to follow my colors, okay? If you wanna make him, you know, some sort of, you know, goth unicorn, you can use like blacks and purples and reds. If you want to make him, you know, like rainbow bright, you can use all jewel tones and primaries. Um, this is, you know, play. Are you using rayon Madeira? Yes. Gluten GL pancakes with dark chocolate chips. Use the King Arthur GF pancake mix. Really good. Mm. Hello, Shankster. Come here. You got some jump stitches. Let's get rid of those. All right. So there's one between his horn and his mane. And there's one between his mane and his bangs. And there's one between his bangs and the bottom of his mane. Haircut for Shanky. Boy, he's already starting to look and give me the evil eye, isn't he? I hate you. So after the medium pastel blue is the lime green. Slowing down, is this a good pace? Goth Shanky is now a weekend must have. So did you move the camera or the machine? I moved, or the mat and the camera. The camera and the mat are still in their same places. I pulled Cora off of the sew bench and brought her over here. All right, so lime green. I figured that was easier plus better lighting, especially now that it stopped raining buckets. Uh, 
Did you get the Thunder Boomers in Dallas last night? And lime green ready to go. Miss you too, Chris. So how are you liking Molly? Okie dokie. So there are two jump stitches. Uno. And dos. Right there. Now, Here's for me. You don't have to do this. You know your machine better than um, I do. The next part is the black satin outlining um, and details on his face. Cora um, has a little bit of a bobbin spring problem on satins. On sketches and fills, she's okay. But the spring, see that spring right in there? it's starting to give way. It's not bad enough, and I've already tightened her as much as I can. Um, she's not bad enough for a whole new bobbin basket, but when I'm doing satins, um, a black or a white satin, I always make sure that my bobbin, just on just on Cora, Cora's got 10, no, Cora's got 19 million stitches on her, so she's, you know, old and tired. Um, I go ahead and change out to a black bobbin so that if I do get bobbin pull through on this black satin that's coming up, it's pulling through black bobbin and you can't tell as much. All right, she, uh, she does desperately need a new a bobbin basket. Uh, I ordered two of them last year and they were like $22 each and that was great and fine. And then in January, I went to go order another one for her. And it had gone up to $45. And I'm like, oh, wait a minute, what? You'd never heard it called a bobbin basket before? What tension is Cora on? Um, Cora is, her top tension is negative four. She's a little wrung out. Okay. So I've got, let's see, so far I love her. She's working wonderfully. The threader, I'm having to lick the thread and poke it through the needle. Hmm, one more color and you'll be caught up. So I'm gonna go ahead and start her satin because that's gonna take a while. And then um, once her satin's done, I will pause for everybody else's satin to catch up so that we can do the next steps together. Ooh, I got a new one for around 22 bucks. Where did you find that, Debbie? You're gonna have to post that in the group so I can find it. 22 is not bad. 45 blew my wheels, which is what I found it for on Amazon. Okay, and away we go. I am gonna now, don't you do that to me. There you go. I'm gonna go sit down at the computer. I'm gonna leave the camera. Let's see if I can get a better angle on the stitching. That's about as good as she's gonna get, folks. There you go. I can go sit down at the computer now. Oh.
stitches on a fall bell be released on Monday, but how you guys doing? How's everything happening? We doing all right? We surviving? I noticed that everybody's cooking good food for dinner.
all to know that I dressed up for this event. I put on a bra and a clean t-shirt. As a matter of fact, I am wearing my four cheese tacos t-shirt that I got from Chris. So I'm almost dressed up. self-isolation because Scott and I are the primary assistants for his parents. They're both in their late 80s with other health issues. So they're not allowed to go out or anywhere and we need to stay away and risk not getting it since we're the ones bringing them their groceries and going and fixing stuff and taking care of them. I'm kind of nervous about the whole situation. If it were just Scott and I, it'd be no big deal. But with Ron and Doris being 80, 87 and 89, I, I, I'm uncomfortable with things. Yes, I'm, I'm actually cutting out bobs over here on the other side of the stitch bitch, the bitch, the arm. Your boss showed up with a 12 pack on that. That's a cool boss. Yeah, they're um, the the jump stitches I have, the uh, jump stitch scissors, they're beaners. Um, I will go find the exact name of them. They're the six inch ones. And Gabriella, I will put them up. done already holy buckets all right I guess it's time for me to cut some jumps huh oi did juice okay come here shanky Okay, so there should not be very many jumps and the ones that we have should be easy enough. I tried to set this up so that it has a minimal of jumps even though it's got several objects. And I know a lot of you really hate cutting jumps. I kind of don't mind it. I think it's a little therapeutic. It makes me focus my mind a lot on just one thing uh, and pay attention to what I'm doing and go slow. It also feeds my meticulous OCD nature. I don't mind cutting jumps. I try not to design a lot of jumps into stuff for you guys, but I, I like them. I mean, I don't want a whole pattern of nothing but jumps. 
Uh, make an essential business. Make aluminum cans for beer and soda. Can't be quarantined. Without you're right. <laughs> Work on a military base caring for recruits. All right. So I am gonna pause here so everyone can catch up. Because the next steps we should do together. Do do do. So what we're doing next is we're putting all the back stuff that's going to create um, both the hiding of the raw stitches and the clear pocket that your ID will go into. <clears throat> so one of the hiccups in our giddy up is going to be when we cover the pull back of this with Ollie, we're going to, is this on, it's on vinyl. This is on vinyl, okay? It's a shimmering sans iridescent vinyl. Back stuff. <laughs> Danielle, stop, you bad girl. All right, so again, I cut this way too large. For our purposes, we don't need this much Ollie. Nobody ever needs this much Ollie. So I'm going to trim it down a little bit. And it's all jaggedy and ugly. Oh, the other thing that we're going to need right about now is tapey tape. Yay! Oh, you're right. I am going to have to change my bobbin. But you know what? Since I am going to be doing a satin edge eventually, um, I am going to pull the black. And I am going to pull the black bobbin. And since I am going to do my satin edge in hot pink, because I'm just that kind of person, I have spun up a hot pink bobbin. Woohoo! Arg trying to thread around the camera is a new and fun experience. Where did my bobbin go? Come here, bobbin. Oh, you're kidding me. I did not. Oh, there it is. Ah! And there goes all my water. Thank God it's in an adult sippy cup. <laughs> You are ready. Where do you get Ollie Fun? I got Ollie Fun from Joanne's Fabrics online. Do you use Okay, so for the for things like tack togethers on dice trays and for fobs, if I color match, I'm sending so little thread through the bobbin that yes, on something like this, that bobbin was spun up from the same 40 weight spool, which might be why this Brings get worn out in my bobbin basket. So first thing we're going to do, if we're all caught up, is we are going to tape the Ollie Fun down. Just top and bottom stash stitch path. Now we are going to take our clear plastic, and hopefully one part of our clear plastic has a, a straight edge. No, apparently no part of our clear plastic has a straight edge. Wow. That is way wonky. So I need to cut a straight edge on my clear plastic. And this is where we find out that my eyesight is going. Oi, there we go. All right, so I've got a nice straight edge on my, this is 16 gauge. And you know what? I messed you guys up. I am so sorry. See this little line right here? That is the dye line for where the plastic's edge needs to be. And since it's going to be hidden from the Ollie here in a second, you wanna grab 
a pen and a ruler and extend it out so that you can see when you put the ollie on, ollie ollie oxen free, when you put your ollie on where that line is and then you're going to place your clear right across it, see that line right there and right there can, I don't know how the reflections are working, but I've lined up the top edge of my clear plastic right to those lines. And I'm gonna tape them in place so they don't slip slide away. And then because it is ultra humid right now, Guys, you cannot believe how humid it is right now because we got all the rain. Um, this clear plastic is going to stick like nobody's business. Um, yes, you can do fabric. Go ahead and do fabric because the edges of this are going to be um, a satin stitch. So when we applique trim it, um, the raw edges will be hidden under. I'm going to post new moon gift and ask it. Okay, so we've got, so this clear plastic is, I know right now I can feel the humidity. It's gonna stick to my stitch plate and it's gonna make an awful, awful, ooh, that's wet. Um, uh, jaggy of my satin, it's gonna look, or of my stitch line, it's gonna look horrible. So I am going to cut myself out right now some clear um, WSS. This is the Saran Wrap stuff. And I am going to tape it to the back of my hoop so that my clear plastic doesn't jerk and catch. This is um, the trick I've been using for quite some time for this. However, I just ordered some baking parchment paper because I've been told if you cover your stitch plate and stitch bed with the parchment paper, it works just as well as the WSS. Would a double layer of vinyl be too much for the machine? No, because you sew through two layers of vinyl all the time. Um, when you tack together um, a dice tray or a fob, that's two layers of vinyl. Your machine, yes, we're all on the back. Um, are those fabric-y shopping bags? Are those fabric-y shopping bags? Lynette, I'm not sure what you're asking. Okay, so has everybody... Ray, your machine will do triple, um, the 10 needle will do triple vinyl and the 6 needle will do triple vinyl, but my 770s have a hard time with triple vinyl. They kind of whine at me. Of course, mine are also old and beat up, so. Yeah, the, the reusable grocery bags that you get from the store, that's Ollie fun. Yeah, it's, that's, that is, it's, oh, Scott told me what the trade name, that Ollie is the trade name. He told me what the actual material is called, and I can't remember. Okay, so are we ready to go, guys? Um, we've got our Ollie down, we've got our clear plastic, or clear plastic down, and we've got it coated in either some tissue paper or some um, WSS to keep it from sticking. Okay. So we're gonna pop this in. We're gonna make sure that our tape is not gonna catch on anything. And we are going to do color stop 11. Color stop 11. This is gonna be a double stitch, not a bean stitch, but a double stitch all the way around for us to applique off of the color of the bobbin. Right now, um, it doesn't matter. In a minute when we go to satin, you, you'd like to match your top to your bottom. I put the pink in and go ahead right now since I already had everything rocking and rolling and ready to go. But it, right now, the color of the bobbin can be black, white, pink, whatever. Okay, so that's just a little double stitch all the way around and we are going to trim top and bottom. We're gonna applique trim. Don't panic, applique trim is not hard, especially if you use the right scissors. 
Um, I use applique cut or applique scissors. These are Ginger duck bills. I love them. You put the paddle on top of the stitches that you don't want to cut and the Sharpie bit down. And then you pull the fabric or the vinyl away from the stitches just a hair. I mean, don't yank, don't, don't unhoop your project. But if you can get a good amount of tension, you can slide like butter, like butter, I tell you. Just like that. You don't have to go hanky, 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 choppy, choppy, choppy. Um, once you get started, good duck bills will slide right along just like, just like butter. Just like that. Okay. Okay. Snip there. One more. Okay. And down this side. And then right there on that corner, get the last little bit. Oh, that's jutty outy too much. There we go. And maybe that's a little jutty outy too. I'm obnoxiously perfectionist about some of this stuff. All right, now we're gonna flip it over. And we are going to take and pull the exterior, leave the interior of the WSS there, but pull the exterior off. I've learned this trick. Leave the interior in because there's still gonna be clear plastic that wants to stick to your stitch plate, but this exterior can go because we're about to trim all of this stuff. So take up your left and right tapes and just like we did on the front, we're gonna trim this one layer at a time I know, I know, I know. Why don't we trim it all at once? Because if you go slow and careful, you make less mistakes. So first we're gonna trim, ooh, that away. Um, we're gonna pick up our clear plastic. I don't know if you can see that. And we're gonna slide our scissors underneath and we're gonna slide them right down along that stitch line. Careful not to puncture anything or snip our stitches. Then we're gonna turn and we're gonna do the bottom I say that, there we go. Am I still, yes, I'm still in frame, okay. Don't snip your stitches, just run it along the bottom. And now up the side. And again, nice sharp applique scissors. You don't even have to hacky, hacky, hacky. It just slices it right through. Now we go back and do the exact same thing to the Ollie Fun or the fabric or whatever you used for the back to hide the stitches. Okay, we're gonna get right up there against that stitch line and we are gonna run our scissors along the stitch line and we're gonna turn. Try and keep the nose of your scissors angled up a little bit so you don't accidentally jab a hole like I just did in your um, WSS. I'm not used to having people watch me do this. So in inevitably, I'm screwing it up. All right, and along there, and then along there. Oops. So if you get a little too far out, you can go back and do the hacky hacky thing. I'm usually not this bad at this. Usually I'm really, really good at it. It's the pressure of having all these people watch me screw up. Ugh. And in privacy of my own home, I am a master at this. But you guys sitting here watching me, you know what? It's probably good that I'm screwing it up um, and having to go back and do it a little trim at a time. That way you can see anybody, even somebody who's doing this for years and years and years will screw up. And there's ways to fix it. Okay, you don't have to get all upset. It's cool. All right. 
So we've got the back trimmed, we got the front trimmed, everything's trimmed, everything's cool. Our bobbin color matches our satin color. And you don't have to do hot pink. If you don't like hot pink, do blue, do green, do black, do white. I don't care. It's your stupid ID badge. Um, what, you're human? Yes, totally. I just came in just now. What are we making? We're making an ID badge. Okay. Are we all caught up and ready? Can I put her back in? Him back in? It back in? Gender neutral unicorn back in? All right. So our bottom thread and our top thread match. We're going to put this bad boy back in. And away we go.
Looky there. How long will the design be on sale? It's going to be $2 forever, baby. This is one of my gifts to you to get us all through this weird, strange time. I'm not about to, um, to go cause more stress by going, oh my God, I've got to buy it this second. No, if I put it up for $2, then it'll stay $2 forever. If I've put it up for free, it'll stay free forever. I don't play the reindeer games. I don't have time to go back and change prices on anything. Is that okay, Ber Bernina? Does that help you out a little bit? Okay, there we are. And so obviously, you know, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim some of these um, little hairs because they are bothering me. I do not like that. Come here. Come here. Ah, oh, there we go. And then tiny little tweezers. That's all trimmed up. Ew! Look at the back. Yeesh. Okay. So there's a couple of things we got to do now. The first one is we are going to take this floppy saran wrap WSS off the back. Yay. Then we are going to remove... Um, I've got at least four people watching whilst I'm in the queue. I'm... I'm I'm confused. Will the throat? No, I I trimmed it. Not it ties. It can let's see. Where's okay? There, there. I trimmed the hairs down to the knot, but the knot is still there. I didn't cut the knot. What stabilized did you hoop? Uh, WSS uh, woven. WSS water soluble. What? That sewing machine. <laughs> okay, now we are going to take the patch or the um, ID badge out of the woven and all of this will melt away in hot water but I always like to try and minimize the amount of this stuff because it does get gummy and blah 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 that I have to melt away so I take a seam ripper and I tilt it away from my satin so I don't accidentally slice my satin and I go about a 16th but then again remember guys I've been playing with a seam ripper for a very long time I've been a costumer and a seamstress and a quilter for a very long time. So this seam ripper is like, you know, a second appendage to me. Actually, it would be like a 22nd appendage, but whatever. Um, I'm going to seam rip it out. And I probably will not take you to my sink and have you watch me douse it in hot water so that it melts away. But trust me, it melts away. And then I've got a string right there. So I am going to carefully don't snip your satin snip that away there we go there we go now they will not if you're cutting the jumps which she is oh, queuing okay um now we need to cut Ooh. i am tempting fate by using scissors this close to a satin i know i am hey but i did it okay now we need to open this up so that we can put our badge thingy on it. Again, I'm best with a seam ripper. That is that is my jam, man. So I am going to start a slash with my seam ripper. Then I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna cut from the back and I am going to carefully, uh, don't snip your satins, man. Don't snip your satins, but very carefully teeny tiny little cuts and that's going to make it look a little jaggy but I don't want to cut that satin man I just want to open this hole up enough to slide my badge holder into it okay and if I screw up I want to screw up on the back where nobody's going to see it but me Ooh. Mm, I'm going to fold this over like this because that's jaggy and I don't like it better yay okay I may I can almost guarantee you that as soon as this camera goes off I'm gonna sit here and mess with this and mess with this until it's perfect um and then I'm probably gonna screw it up because that's that's the way I do raise your hand if you're one of those people you know oh my hair is almost good let me just fix this one thing and then 10 minutes later you look like a disaster area yep that's me okay so there are two ways to finish this um 
you can either use one of these duba hitchies. You can't see. Can you see now? Okay. Um, you can use one of these duba hitchies. These are called ID badge clip with strap. And I got a hundred of them on Amazon. And I got a hundred of them two years ago and I am still using them. So all you do is you fish it through and you snap it and there you go. Or you can use a badge reel. All right, I got this badge reel from Jane on New Moon and you, same deal. You unsnap it, you pass it through and then you wear this on your pocket or your collar and it extends out and your ID badge I found an old school ID, ha ha ha. Um, have, I covered up my school ID number just in case, but slip it all the way in, and there you go. Woohoo! I still have to run the hot water over the edge to get rid of the last WSS, but there is our stitch along for the Shanky ID badge. So any punches that shape out that shape? Um, um, brown one, I don't know, maybe there are. I haven't gone looking. Make your own Shanky, Bernina, you can do it. All right, I'm going to go ahead and shut down the video, but I will stay on, you call it wuss in my head, awesome. Um, I'm gonna stay online for a few minutes while I clean up the studio because it is now 5.30 something and I need to go make me some dinner. If you have last minute questions, hit me up, okay guys? Peace.